camera opens on Kensington in the heart of London's West End. The Royal Borough, home to the famed Hyde Park and home to the Queen before her ascension to the throne. It's the original home to the Crystal Palace and the 1851 Exposition. It's to be the site of a beautiful and thriving museum district, if that's to be believed. The camera draws along the cobblestone streets. It's nighttime, with the lanterns on each street corner pushing back on the fog. Amid the quiet of the evening, we start to hear the sounds of footsteps. The camera is now at the ground, a worm's eye view as the footsteps crescendo into the cacophony of running and muffled shouting, and eventually the dull woof of what can only be the hallmarks of etheric powers. As though staying near such an event is not in our best interest, the view moves away, and the sounds of the melee recede into the fog. We move down the street several blocks, and turn right, passing the occasional pedestrian out for an evening stroll, until we find a stretch of townhomes that are along Paddington Way. Eventually, we arrive at the home of Mr. and Mrs. Henry Doyle. Though it is night, the preponderance of streetlights keep the front of the house well illuminated to show the three steps that lead to the door and the door knocker carved in the likeness of an obsidian dragon. It's at this point we see a dexterous hand come into view, grasping the dragon and giving the door two good raps. The camera comes back and we see the trim figure of Monsieur Alonso Joyot. Uh, welcome back, everybody, to uh, Inroads Plays. Um, we're going to go ahead. Joyot's going to get to meet that surly dwarf that met us at the door, isn't he? <laughs> That's, That's correct. correct. Um, the uh, uh, we've we've had a few weeks under our belts now of uh, getting into character, and uh, we're definitely thankful to have you guys back with us. Um, thanks again for joining. Um, we also have Monsieur Joyo, uh, played by Miss Alyssa, uh, back into the fold. But uh, oh, you had nice. a chance. <laughs> that's right. But you've had a chance to see uh, see what Joyo can do. Um, some pretty uh, pretty cool improvisation, if I do say so myself. So um, so that being said, I thought what I would do is uh, go around the table, and for those at home, this is the part where we are going to award experience points for the group. Uh, so that way, um, yeah, we've uh, started handing out those things that are so famous in role-playing games, which helps us build our character. Um, I, 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 vote, I vote Brent gets uh, experience points for Edna. <laughs> most definitely Seconded. most yes. definitely so um so what i'll do is just kind of like explain it to the folks at home and then you guys kind of can follow along too there's there's three main avenues where experience points can be gained um the first one is uh just straight up experience this is where you either complete an adventure reach a milestone um where you are acting on your instincts or you're acting on your beliefs that you've built into your character um, so those are areas where you can actually earn experience points. So for that one, amongst the mixture of you, each of you get two points. And I'll walk through how each of you earn those <coughs> points separately so you don't think I'm just passing them out willy-nilly here. Um, okay. I didn't throw any adventure experience points in there just yet because, you know, we you know we didn't get into any melee. We didn't get any fisticuffs or anything like that. And we're just now kind of embarking on what this is about. You know, we've just found out the, the reason why uh, Mrs. Henry Doyle has you there. So uh, first off, for Dove, I definitely dug it that you worked with your instincts and your beliefs with the reaction to the mob. Um, I thought that was a, that was definitely playing towards your character. And then also your instinct to talk with the servants. Um, towards the end of the recording, it was at the very end of uh, the... Uh, it, it was literally the last thing I did. Yeah, it, it was at the end of Kensington by Torchlight, our last episode. So yeah, I definitely acted on your instinct and beliefs there, so I wanted to give you a point. And then we'll get to some of the other stuff that you did a little bit later. Um, for Lieutenant Blackwell, um, you got your two points. One for your reaction with the constable, uh, quick thinking and using your rank. I thought that was really good. And then also your uh, interactions with, uh, um, what is his name, Mr. Strop, the dwarven, uh, right. the dwarven right. butler. I thought that was really cool, too. Cool. So got you in there for that. Um, for Monsieur Giriot, uh for your improvisation extraordinaire, um, you got your point there. 
Uh, and then also I added a point for a combination of instincts and beliefs because of ingenuity and acting. I thought was really good. And I'm not even talking about like acting within playing your character, but playing your character as another character, which was really cool. <laughs> so we saw we saw the two sides of that from the beginning and then all the way through to the end, you know, when, when we got into uh, into the scene. So it was really cool. Yeah. And you guys watching this have the benefit of actually having been able to watch that because <laughs> the rest of us, Jeff has yet to to publish that particular footage. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we don't even know what happened there. <laughs> no well, idea. Well, to be fair, I haven't I haven't seen your guys' episode yet. That just got released yeah. today. So yeah. uh, And I and I and I thank you for that. So that way it makes this uh, this scene so much better when we uh, when we reunite the uh, the group. So yeah. We're uh, we are all kind of coming into this yeah. only through uh, I like it. you know, word of mouth. I, 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 I know about Edna. I didn't have to use the headphones. Eight. Yeah, that's right. Well you couldn't not hear about Edna. I mean come on. Yeah, it's just yeah. awesome. But yeah, I, don't, I didn't have to do the headphone Legends. thing, so that's good. Um, all right, so Miss Russell, uh, for yes. you, your uh, your determination to go around the mob, and the <laughs> the work that you contributed with that, but then also more on the instinct and beliefs when you were dealing with managing L Dr. Lum and Dove, uh, involving the whole Edna situation, and then also going Manage. into the room. <laughs> Because <laughs> you you switched to Russian, you were kind of working within Dove's comfort zone and trying to get him to like not antagonize Doctor Loom any further. That's not that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we pressed yeah. pause, we pressed pause on that. Let's, 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 put, it that way. let's put it that way. Um, okay. And then uh, for so that's two for you, and then Doctor Loom, you got two, of course. Uh, for basically, you, it was a lot of it was your your monologue. It was the, your reactions, and then you're just you're, you're you're stubborn. You're playing to your your quality, which we'll talk about later. But your 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 stubbornness and your uh, uncouth behavior <laughs> to you, which is not uncouth, but uh, but that's the thing though. That's the way you're playing, and it's just super awesome. Um, so you're 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 dealing with your instincts and your beliefs with the mob, uh, dealing with the house and the people that are in the house, and then of course specifically Edna. Um, the, I, I was not expecting that reaction by a long shot. <laughs> oh. I, was not I don't think anyone that. could have expected that. That Made was me just so happy, <laughs> so good. That, and and you pleased your GM, so that's always good. <laughs> Um, so happy. <laughs> so, so the other way that you can get points is fate points. Um, these are things that you can, uh, at the end of every adventure, you know, I can award you between one and three fate points, depending upon what your adventure achieved as part of the party. Additionally, it's you know, it considers that your adventure has achieved something individually, perhaps like a personal quest, a successful mission, you know, merely saving the world, whatever. Um, you may gain another fate point, but. Um, an adventurer who sits back and lets others do the work, that kind of thing, doesn't normally will go for these. So uh, with that line out of the way, what I'll say is that the fate points are given out for this last time because you, you guys were dealing with complications. And those are going to earn you points faster than anything because you're having to play against those. So I had two awards for that one. Uh, one goes to Dove because he had to play through the missing eye and the hard of hearing. Uh, and he played Barely. it off when dealing with the mob, so that was pretty important. Because the first off is that you didn't hear them. You obviously had the three dice difficulty, but you were still willing to go forward to talk with them, which was going in the face of that complication, so that was really good. Um, and then Dr. Lee, <laughs> that, uh, that streetwise role saved me there. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. But, you know, it's it not it wasn't just the dice, though. I mean, you, you played it through, which was good. Um, and then Dr. Loom, uh, you had to play through your uh, personality, the stubbornness, um, and that kind of culminated with, you know, the side comments that, you know, could end up with infighting, you know, like, hey, don't shut on the furniture, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, and, then the, the, and Edna was obviously a part of that. I kind of awarded the points more on the instincts oh, yeah. leaves up there because that was like an instinctual gut reaction. And it, that, it wouldn't necessarily cause trouble if you handled it right. So we haven't seen how you're going to handle that yet. But <laughs> handle that. It's just wrong. I was just Strike that from the recording. Strike it from the recording. Just wait. Just wait. Remember, remember while, while you guys are all hanging out in the parlor with the good, with the good people, Dove went down to talk to the help. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, that's right. I'm We're gonna just, have to start I'm just there. saying. We're going to have to start there. That's right. Um, uh -huh. 
But the 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 real reason, the main reason though, that you got the fate point was because of you were in the midst of talking with Mrs. Doyle, and you know she mentions the children are missing, that sort of thing. And one of the first things that came into mind was to say, "Well, do you think they might have been sold for some kind of dark rite? Yes, <laughs> some kind of a, a of of a of some kind of a cultish activity." I, and oh she like God. nearly passed out. I mean, because I'm All trying right. to play the character, and I'm like. Oh, oh my gosh! That's <laughs> the master of bedside manner. Yeah, all yeah. I remember was was that I ha- I made some kind of sideways comment, and Miranda like is like nudging Dove. Yeah. All of a sudden, he busts out with that, and I wasn't in the room. My Dove, Dove had left by that point, but right. if I was still in the room, I would have lost it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So so yeah, yep. that's actually. I mean, and I'll I'll be I'll be honest, and I trust you guys not to meta this, but she actually left early because of that. So that actually, that actually turned that turned something in the adventure for you. So like, yeah. Um, so I had to I had to throw a fate point out there because you were definitely playing against the playing against the house on that one. So it was pretty good. So so, so do we just add one point to our fate pool on that That's one? That's fine. Correct. Correct. Okay. Can do that. Cool. Um, so great work, everybody. I think that was super awesome. Um, we had a great time of like putting together. Um, some history for the Torchbearer Society. I think that the item that you brought up, Nate, was really super cool. That the possibility that your father may have been the reason for the downfall of the prior set of or the prior team. I don't um, think I brought that up, but yeah, that, that plays into my you, character. Well, somebody somebody did bring that up, but I don't think it was me. But that was a, a good idea. Yeah, I don't for, so all around. All right, well, all around, it was just a great idea. Yeah. Everybody was coming up with some good yeah. stuff. So that's already become part of the canon. So uh, we'll see how that shakes out later. Very cool. Um, Okay, so those are those are kind of like the main ways that you can earn uh, earn points. So kind of like the three things are like your instincts, beliefs is kind of quote unquote one. Um, the next one is dealing with any pertinent actions uh, that you're dealing with doing that kind of moves the adventure forward. And then the third one is playing to your complications. So you can earn fate points that way as well. So there you go. Um, I think so for the experience good. points, uh, Jeff, do we apply those to our attributes or skills, or how, do, how does that work? That's a great question. So as far as uh, – let's go ahead and go over to our, uh, to our fair book here. So as far as experience points, experience – this is why I do enjoy the PDFs, folks. Um, I do have, love the hardcore book or the hardcover book much better, but – it's kind of nice to be able to just do a control F and find the darn stuff. Indeed. All right, experience points. It's searching. It's searching. It's staying there. We'll, we'll see if second edition changes anything. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, hang on one sec. It's giving me a. It's giving me an error saying that it's not finding it, which doesn't make sense. Maybe they're called something different. Oh, well, it better not be, because that's what I wrote down here. Uh, let's see. Oh, you know what? Actually, I've got my uh, – I can use my handout here to find that information. Here we go. Got it here. Okay, there it is. Page 193. I found it before you because I already cut it out. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right. So if you wanted to spend your experience points, uh, if you wanted to up, a, up an attribute, it's four times the new level. Mm. Um, extra health die costs eight points. Extra quintessence is eight points. Skills is basically common or specialty. It's the new level of the skill. So okay. So you can get that there. Um, new spells, twice the ritual cost. Uh, magical skill, twice the new level skill. So that's different from your common and specialty skills. Uh, new sigils, uh, sigils uh, six points. Um, let's see, what's another one here? Talents. Talents are twice the talent builds point cost that you want to purchase. Okay. So now, in, in second edition, they had one that said for 10 points, which is holy cow ridiculous, mm-hmm. uh, 10 points you can buy off a complication. That's right. That's right. What's I don't. The... I don't know if that made it to third third edition or not. It did. Ten points for each complication. Mm-hmm. Would it point. let you keep the the benefits of the complication, or would it negate that? I think it negates it straight up. It's like if your complication was, I'm a boozer. You know, I, I drink a lot. Then you know, you just kind of go to rehab or something like that. <laughs> you went to AA. <laughs> yeah, you went to Victorian AA or whatever it be. It would base. It would basically be like Dove getting a mechanical eye. 
<laughs> yeah, there you go. There you uh-huh. go. Which would be awesome. We'll have to have like a separate episode for that. In depth, in depth oh, description of. Yeah. I got stuff I need to do with points long before I'm saving up ten to get rid of an eye problem. <laughs> yeah, right. An eye problem. Dove is nice. Dove is fun eye. He's proven this. <laughs> I love how missing an eye is just an eye problem. Three? In the PDF version, it's one. Okay, that's fine. Thanks. I want to refer refer to it myself. And then when I dive off camera, I'm probably eating. So, <laughs> nice. you guys at home, no I'm, food for I'm you. I'm muting it, and you can't have any of my my seafood gumbo. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so we have. Let me make sure everything else is locked in and ready to go. So we have now got everybody, or we're getting everybody back together. So that is going to. To work out very good for everybody in concerned. All right. Bring it up to 100%. Okay. So, we are now, so just kind of like a super brief recap um, for uh, um, for you guys. You guys were called aside uh, by Sir Winston to come over and talk with Mrs. Henry Doyle. And she's explained that uh, her children have gone missing and that they've been missing. They haven't returned for the uh, for the evening and they weren't seen most of the day yesterday. Um, the other thing is that you have a minor timetable in that we're trying to find them before her husband returns in two and a half days. So if you start tomorrow, then two more days, he should be home. So that's kind of where we're starting there. Now... Monsieur Joyot, to bring you into the fold. So what has happened now is that you've you've had your contact with uh, the women's circle before. So you you had your uh, your your opportunity to make your grand performance and make a good impression with them, and that's actually held on to the point that Mrs. Doyle contacts or sends word to you directly to to come to her door. And the way, obviously, that the uh, the cog of fate turns, it just so happens that uh, you're not going to be alone when you arrive. <laughs> so, uh, so when you when you uh, when you get your summons, there's a there's a carriage that comes for you, and uh, uh, picks you up at your traditional place, and brings you brings you into Kensington onto uh, Paddington Way, and uh, in front of the uh, the marble stepped brownstone that belongs to Mr. and Mrs. Henry Doyle. So that's where we find you, uh, about ready to knock on the door. And um, inside, the uh, uh, Dove has already left to go and talk with the servants, correct? Correct. Okay. So that leaves Lieutenant Blackwell, Dr. Loom, and Miss Russell in the drawing room, as it were. Okay. All right. So... You three, then, uh, the good lieutenant, the good doctor, and uh, Miss Russell, uh, hear a knock at the door. Um, you've uh, actually the lieutenant is the only one who recognizes the sound because he uh, he had to attend the door earlier. Um, and uh, you hear the uh, the heavy footsteps of um, Mr. Straub as he uh, heads over to the door. And uh, so, Alyssa, uh, the door comes open. And uh, you are looking uh, downward into the face of a dwarf. Um, he has a well manicured beard. Um, he's very meticulous about his appearance, and he is—he uh, looks up at you for a moment. And he kind of narrows his eyes. And uh, let's see here—he's kind of got—he's got a bit of a condescending look on his face, you know, like the, like a typical butler or or the head of the house that sort of thing or head of the servants uh would be but uh, again just a fastidious about his appearance he's got some graying in his beard a little bit of gray at the at the wings uh on his uh, at his temples and uh he uh says good evening um may i help you bonsoir my good sir i have been called upon by mrs henry doyle monsieur joyeux Ah, yes, yes, of course. Um, uh, c- come in, please. Uh, there's a 
there's more people here as well, but um, I guess that is what the lady wanted. Please come. May I take your coat? Of course, sir. So he uh, he walks up onto this little step, st step uh, uh, like set of three steps, walks up and then grabs your, takes your coat from your shoulders and uh, folds it over his hand. And he says, um, the drawing room is the first door on the right. Please wait there. I will present you. And he steps down from the, uh, the three steps, hits a button on the side of the wall, and you hear like little cogs whirl as the uh, stairs get withdrawn into the wall and sealed up. And then he turns to a closet, opens it, and pulls down a coat rack that he can hang your coat on, and then wheels it back up so that that way it's out of way and not dragging on the floor. Uh, follow me. And so he uh, he leads you down a small hallway, and to the right there's double sliding doors, and he uh, opens those up, stands at the entryway, and says, uh, Monsieur Joyo, at the request of the lady. Um... He, he waves you inside, and as you walk in, there are three familiar faces to you. Um, uh, may I present uh, Lieutenant Albion Blackwell, um, Loom, and Russell? Evening. Uh, Monsieur Joyot, uh, at your service. Um, I believe that uh, I must attend to your fourth that was here. Um, <laughs> I will see that uh, if if uh, if if Mrs. Mrs. Doyle may return, or if I need to convey information for you. And he like eyes the dwarf, the other dwarf in the room, <laughs> severely. And he's like, I will see what I can do about returning her, but um, I may need to convey the information. Um, good evening. I will be returning. Uh, I'll see that Carolyn brings in some refreshments as you need. And he steps back, closes the door, and stumps down the hall you hear him walking away the the clunk of his uh his hard heels of the of his of his shoes so i get uh, the distinct feeling that i have missed something <laughs> oh good joyo is here if we need to have the children swindled out of their money certainly we will have the situation well at hand <laughs> well you know what they say dr moon two heads are better than one <laughs> i have Ooh. never said that sir I find my own head completely sufficient in most occasions. And with that, Dr. Loom starts uh, kind of uh, going through the room. And he's looking for a piece of page paper or parchment and a quill. And mm. then assuming he, he finds such a thing, he starts writing down some notes. Ah, I'm just surprised that Dr. Loom didn't say, oh, joy, it's joyo. <laughs> <laughs> too good. Too, too flippant. If ever good. I found the arrival of that person to be an occasion of joy, I would certainly say it. <laughs> As it is, I would not hold your breath. Yeah. Uh, okay. uh, so good, good evening, Monsieur so, um, Joyo. We're glad you could join us. So the lieutenant just looked at her. I'm glad to join you. The lieutenant just asked her, I trust you've been uh, keeping yourself out of trouble, Monsieur Joyo. As much as I can trust you all to keep out, uh, keep yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So uh, you're looking. <laughs> so you're looking around the room. It's kind of like you've you've been kind of ushered, you know, into the house for your various in, uh, avenues of entrance, and uh, arrived in this drawing room. And you finally had a chance to kind of look around a little bit. And yeah, the the, the drawing room here is it's interesting because it's kind of a mix. Like you, they have the picture there on rule twenty, but uh, doesn't quite convey everything I wanted. Um, there's the drawing room is furnished rather tastefully. Um, uh, there's a painted portrait of Mr. and Mrs. Doyle hanging above the mantelpiece, which unfortunately is not here, but again, imagination, folks. Um, it's interesting, though, You, so whoever may like pay attention to it, it's interesting to note that when you see the picture, uh, Mrs. Doyle is obviously Eldrin. You know, she, she's her, or, or what for the people at home is an elf, basically, but they're called Eldrin in the Victoriana world. But uh, Mr. Doyle, Mr. Henry Doyle, is human. Um, he's fair featured. Um, he is, uh, he's, you know, a dashingly handsome man. Um, he's got powerful blue eyes that, um, you can, you can see even in the painting, they seem to be alive. Like, you know, he's just, he's got like an inner resonance that uh, most likely is how he was able to court this Eldrin woman. Add to the fact that, uh, you can, t you've heard tell that, uh, Mrs. Doyle is rather young, uh, for an Eldrin. So, 
that may play into it. Um, the walls are beautifully decorated. Uh, there's uh, assorted paintings. Uh, there's uh, a preponderance of Oriental flair. Um, you know, again, we're using the nomenclature of the times. Um, so things that are coming from China, um, specifically some things that are coming from deep China, uh, in the form of various carvings that are on the mantelpiece and on side tables. Um, also on the mantelpiece, there is to the side of the big picture are two um, two pictures or paintings of the of two elder children. Um, there's there's smaller ones that have various ages, but there's two larger ones that look to be about the age that she described her children to be. Um, and so I've kind of I've added those into uh, into roll twenty so that you can see them there. The top one is um, the top one is Henrietta. So that's her, and then the bottom one is Michael. So, so yeah, so the uh, so again, and then the, there's the the two sofas, uh, two seat sofas that are there um, that uh, have a coffee table that's nearby, and the coffee table is actually rather ornately uh, decorated uh, in a Chinese fashion as well. So there's definitely a a tilt towards that type of uh, aesthetic in the room. Is so. there anything of of the the Chinese decorations that would be meaningful in any way to Miranda? Uh, let's see here. Just, I, that she would just recognize it. Uh, possibly. I, mm -hmm. I know that, I think I remember you have an art skill. Is that right? I think so, yes. So think, let me look yeah. at my skills again. I think, yes, I think, because I think my, I from my education, I have that. Right. Let's see. Right. Definitely have painting, but yep. let me see what do I have for art in general. Yes, I have, well, Eight point. Okay. And it's in my it's in my background as well. Great. Well, let's uh, let's do it. Let's roll it up. Oh, okay, okay. Let's see if I can figure out again how to do this. <laughs> so you can grab on your okay. uh, grab on your token, and uh, you should have the skill test function there. And I'm not sure if you had. Depends on if you added the macro for art or not. I or... think yeah, I think I did. But let's okay. see here. Or you can roll it straight from your character sheet as well. <clears throat> okay, so I'm on me, and then I go to my character sheet, and there, that's act, not art. Where's art? <laughs> oh, that's right. Here. I was the first one I put in there. All right, so let's take a look. So we got to make sure we hover over those, uh, hover over those results. See how we did. So no black dice on that one, obviously. So you actually rolled uh, three to four. Okay. So unfortunately, that nothing. Yeah. You know, there's. It, it doesn't seem like it's from a particular region. However, you know, it could be that maybe it's time that he's looking for a certain time period, maybe. Okay. Um, so that's that's a possibility. But that's that's kind of all you all you notice from that. Okay. And then, uh, Dr. Loom, you said you were taking some notes. Uh, any particular observations that you're putting down? Um, they are um, just something that he is working on that he has on his mind, but he is also, um, he has a delicate memory, and so he would also like just to quickly ruffle through the papers and whatever happens to be uh, around on the desk. Hmm. And okay. try to commit as much of it as possible to memory in case it comes back to be useful later. Great. So, how does that delicate memory work when it comes to the game, like mechanically? It says if you have seen something once, you will probably always remember it, whether it's a face, the layout of a building, or the text of a novel. As long as you get one success on an easy plus six to dice pool wits roll, you can remember all of the details. There we go. All right. Well, let's do it. Let's roll roll it up, good sir, and see what you uh, see what you glean. Uh, and so my skill would be my wits, uh, which is your wits here. end. My wits end. My wits end at three. So is that three <laughs> plus the six for the easy roll? There you yeah. go. So it'd be a skill of nine. There you go. 
Nine dice you get on this. Nine crazy. dice. Oops. Oh my god. I messed it up. I tried again. It it does miss something when you're not doing this in the physical world because to actually pick up nine dice and throw it <laughs> is just tactically amazing. Yeah. I'm having, I'm having flashbacks to my miniature. <laughs> And I think Daniel, <laughs> Daniel Fisher would like would shoot me if I told him that I had those miniature D sixes that I would use <laughs> that I would use for Shatterrun, so tort terribly imbalanced. <laughs> Sorry, Daniel, if you're watching this, I apologize. I've given them up. So, Do I have any uh, black uh, negative um, dice? To add to this bowl, I'm sorry? gonna I'm gonna add I'm gonna add one black dice to this, and that's if you get some successes, you'll you'll see why. Ooh. There we go. Nice. All right. Wow. So one, two, three successes and no black dice. So that doesn't chance anything out. Okay. So in taking a look at this, and obviously you can, you can take your notes as you will there. And looking at this, looking at the coffee table, actually, there is, um, there's a couple of things that catch your eye. Number one is a, um, uh, an aerostat ticket. So kind of, again, this world's version of an airplane um, that's a steam slash magical con contrivance that uh, brings people through the air. That um, it's a, a ticket from Hong Kong. Okay, and it's uh, it was actually dated uh, two weeks ago. And it has, you know, it has the traditional tearing at the bottom where it shows that the ticket was observed and, and uh, looked at by the uh, conductor. All right, and uh, let's see here. Let me do that. Boom. There you go. So, so yeah, the there's the ticket, and then the uh, let's see here. And then the next thing is, um, and in case the folks are not wanting to know why I'm grinning, is because I'm getting ninja notes. So. You can do that in Rule 20, which is really fun. Um, so let's see. So the ticket and the next part is a, it looks like some he was maybe doodling on the notepad itself. So when you're actually holding the notepad and you open it up, it looks like he was doodling something. And it was kind of impressed into the paper. You can't mm. see it right now, so he took that page with him. So, <coughs> so uh, Pencil's been invented yet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they've been invented. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's, it's the, a rough approximation of pencils. Yeah, the sideways lead thing to try to uh, ascertain what was written on there. Um, it might not work too well with the current implement that's here, um, because it's a it's a quill pen nib with a uh, or yeah a quill pen that's available. Um, so you may have to use something else like powder or something like that. You've kind of, you've had to do something similar to this before when you were trying to. Uh, well, we won't get into what you were trying to do. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, the uh, you would you would probably need something else. So if if you want to, I don't know, what do you want to do with it? Um, I want to take it. Okay. Do you want to do said taking without the others knowing? Uh, no. Okay. I'm I'm fine with them seeing me. Rip a piece of paper off of the desk and stick it into my pocket. Okay. So there you go. That's, Classic loom. <laughs> Classic loom. Nice. So anybody say anything with that uh, with that happening? Who's in the room? No. At this point. So I just rolls his eyes and shrugs his shoulders. Nice. Information is power, sir. <laughs> That's right. Which means that you may be one of the hopeless, most helpless individuals I've ever met in my life. <laughs> I would oh, not call in random. I would not call taking random pieces of paper knowledge, my friend. Gentlemen, do we have any ideas about how to pursue these missing children? Missing children. Oh yeah, Monsieur Joyo doesn't even know what we're here for. Oh, I was in uh, our seance. You, well, I certainly hope we're not raising the souls of these children <laughs> because I'm expecting <laughs> them not to be dead. I. Uh, <laughs> Well, so in that case, uh, Monsieur Joyo, uh, the woman of the house has uh, misplaced her children. Um, 
we are unsure of where they've gone or who might have taken them, and we really need to get focused on finding them because they are young children out and about, and that could be very dangerous. True, true. For some reason, the woman fled the room before we could get any more information from her. <laughs> I suggest we... Uh, For some reason, I think it might have had something to do with your comments to her, sir. I have I'm never no idea what you could be talking about. I'm actually paid, am I? <laughs> Twice in a row. Twice in a row. We need to know where the children disappeared from. <laughs> yes. When they disappeared. And perhaps... Who was the last one who saw them? Well, I oh, think we should uh, seek out Dove and see what he's found, or if he's found out anything from the staff. Because mm. he's questioning the staff right now, isn't he? And on yeah. that uh, on that happy note. <laughs> on then, that uh, note. <laughs> we'll, segue. Uh, we'll, Very well. Segue. We will pin our hopes that the bear has learned something. <laughs> let's uh, mm -hmm. let's do this. We'll uh, let's go ahead and take a quick break. Um, this is going to continue right into the second episode of this session, and then we'll find out how Dove has fared with the uh, with the help, as it were. <laughs> we'll be right back, guys. Stay tuned.